Welcome to Rota Opinion Video. This time I'm gonna talk a little bit about a phenomenon which is rather dangerous and hated and disliked by many, but which is also something that people need to kind of understand in order to, say, pave their own way through extreme metal music. So the topic's question today is NSBM. What it is, what it actually means, what it's supposed to be, and what it's not definitely not supposed to be. So, enter National Socialist Black Metal with Rauda. Now, there are many theories how National Socialist BM or NSBM uh, started to be, how it came originating, and what are the real originators of the genre, and what it musically is. Nowadays, uh, ways to interpret all this is actually quite different how it used to be. For example, when I got to know the first bands of this particular genre, it was probably late 1990s, as my one of my friends ha had an absurd t-shirt. And back then, before that, I mean, I probably had no idea how this thing were to be or how it came to be. Now, back then in the 90s, NSBM wasn't much of a thing. There were bands who were more or less openly, maybe racist, somewhat nationalist, somewhat patriotic, and somewhat worshipping the 1940s, uh, not just German era. But they were like scarce and few. I mean, there were not too many bands actually doing that. Now, if you take a look at nowadays black metal scene, obviously you will find a lot of news and hysteria all about it. These and that band are linked or affiliated with or more or less felt like they are a part of this so-called political black metal, which is usually right-wing stuff. Now, obviously, there are left-wing bands, but it seems that so many reasons, which I'm gonna go a little bit later on in this video, are to be seen more like right-wing linked. Not necessarily for real, that is, in truth-wise, but because so many people feel like that's the thing. Like, for example, even I have been called a Nazi just because I don't have my long hair anymore. And that's a really ridiculous thing, and that's kind of a dangerous claim as well, because that would mean all the leukemia pro patients are Nazis also. And how about those elderly men who actually start to lose their hair? Do they actually become right-wing activist black metal people just because they don't have hair anymore? Yes, as much as I thought. Now... Back to the history. Uh, it seems that some, so many people think that black metal in National Socialist way got born in the 90s. I mean, after the 80s, when bands were more or less related to Satan, Lucifer, and just being kind of in terms uh, anti-Christian, anti-religion, or more like interested in the occult or devilish powers, and being kind of a counterculture to more traditional uh, ways of how European or Western culture is to be seen, that is Christianity and those uh, moral values that came with it. Um, late in the 90s, when pagan things started to emerge, I think Burzum and Varevikernes being one of those reasons, uh, these kind of ideas started to seep into that. I mean, prior to that, you know, heavy metal people with long hair and kind of a uh, anti-society kind of things, and the societal uh, you know, imagery, long-haired, like, we are not gonna go for regular jobs, we are the rebels of this age, and all that stuff. Um, things were quite different. You know, it's, it's not like these were magically connected right there, you know? Uh, bands that were into arsons, you know, burning down churches, and... Uh, now, the Zoom is not exactly working as it's supposed to be. Um, it seems that these uh, bands that had pagan origins and such interests towards, like, uh, pagan religions, they were not related to these ideals of what we later on become to NSBM. But as the th years progressed and as the things started to change and become more linked, it seems like so many bands that had absolutely nothing to do with the kind of a worship for 1930s, 1940s uh, German uh, political movements suddenly became 
one, you know? Uh, it seems like suddenly people started to think that maybe because we have these values and those have the values, we are like brothers, like brethren in combat, in battle, and opposing the same kind of enemies, enemies of certain culture, uh, and valuing some of those ancestral past, our heritage, if you will. But back then there was no political boundaries. I mean, many bands were, and I think still are, more on the left or just don't really care. Me being one of those. And, you know, it doesn't matter where you belong. Either if you're on the left or you're on the right or you're in the middle or you're nowhere, people still kind of uh, put some label on you. For example, in order to kind of understand the differences between nowadays and how it, how it was, it's like we have a couple of examples from Norway. Like early Mortis interview had some of uh, kind of a swastika thing written on a letter for a zine. And still, if you actually read the answers or opinions or whatnot, you don't get the feeling that this guy is a Nazi. Also, uh, Dog Throne used Norsk, Arisk, uh, Svart Metal or something like that on the backside of their albums, which kind of implied that they are uh, Norwegian Aryan black metal. However, they kind of had to explain it that everything was like understood and so forth. But nowadays, things are not that much forgiven. Like if you make one mistake, you're going to be labeled as Nazi for the rest of life. And a good example of this is Toke. Uh, when he like, like some 15 years ago, one show had this swastika tattooed and then it was ruined because somebody dug up that old picture like 12 years later and suddenly the thing happened. This is something I actually explained in one of the earlier reviews, so I'm not going to go into depth with that. Also, some bands which have absolutely no ties, no affiliations with NSBM bands, NSBM members, band sympathizers or whatever are still labeled of those because this guy might know that guy. And that guy is brother to this guy who actually uh, actually runs a label which has band, which has Nazi connections and whatever. So it's like uh, just because you know but know somebody who might have had something to say in the past and suddenly boom. MWA and GLA, for some people, actually is one of those bands that got cancelled because of so-called Nazi allegations. Even though there is no proof, you don't really wash away these kind of... Uh, labels, you know, once you get stamped, you seem like, and the irony of this is very much what reminds me of 1940s, you know, when Jewish people had to wear those uh, stars, like, nowadays it's happening in a different way. Now, I'm not defending here people who are right-wing, left-wing, or no-wing at all, because, I mean, it doesn't really concern me, I mean, I don't like people of extreme political opinions, nor I am not a person of political opinions myself, really. But still, when it comes to bands becoming these entities playing music, it's a totally different thing than having, say, connections to a label which also sells music that is maybe related to one of these political agendas. Also, we have to understand the person having opinions doesn't mean that this band this person might be tied to are one and the same thing. It's like marriage, let's put it this way. So if you have a couple, and it doesn't matter if it's a wife or a husband or two wives, two husbands, there's a per one person who has really strong opi uh, political opinions, say on the right wing, because we're now on the topic. It doesn't really taint the other one here, right? Even though some people might really think that it works like that. So, uh, Nowadays, it seems very confusing to get, because nowadays, if you have certain pagan symbols, Nazi. If you have played in the wrong company, Nazi. If you have wrong kind of symbol, like a logo, Nazi. You have a wrong font, Nazi. You have a, some kind of a old um, cover art kind of a thing, Nazi. I mean, it really shouldn't go that way. But nowadays, people are so scared of certain elements in music. In, in labels, in lyrics, and all that stuff, that these kind of labels start spreading like a plague. So instead of people actually being with the truth, being with facts, 
they start just, you know, labeling each other. And it's, it seems like a pissing contest to me. One of the funniest things was, I think, happening with the United States hipster black metal band Ueda, who were also labeled as Nazis, being uh, despite being kind of a liberal band. So it seems like once this kind of epidemic starts to happen, nobody's going to be safe. Now, this might actually work for the benefit of black metal, because so many bands from traditional black metal wanted to be kind of a dangerous, wanted to be about hate and negative things in the world related to death and uh, kind of a destruction of the modern uh, society and world and its world values and whatnot. So actually making black metal more hated and, and kind of uh, uh, felt with all kinds of negative feelings, resentment and whatnot, actually might become the favor of black metal, not so much in the commercial way, obviously, because, you know, bands get canceled, gigs get canceled and all that stuff. But those who are still keeping the old school flame alive are actually, or might be actually happy about it. But the sad thing is that this is so much become kind of a turf for propaganda war. Like, I mean, you just, everybody's pointing fingers in different directions and nobody's not giving so much truth here. The room, you know, the, the reason to be. The thing here is, real NS people, you know, like who have really strong political agenda, they are not hiding it so much. They're very open about it and they have their own uh, politically incorrect events and albums and bands to play there. But most of the bands now affiliated with NSPF movement have nothing to do with it. So they are basically um, kind of a collateral casualties or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I don't think if it's doing actually anybody any good, unless you just happen to be hating everything that is related to black metal. Now, um, political black metal, as uh, tempting it is to so many people, I find it rather annoying. Not maybe disgusting, because even though I don't like politics myself, um, I don't find it very uh, interesting. I don't find those lyrics something I could relate with, be it on the right or be it on the left. I just find it, it's, it belongs to some different genre. For example, when trash metal was all about society and political things and so many other things, death metal went to create lyrics about death and violence and murder, all kind of a horrible topics, but let's be honest about it, it's mostly just fantasy or telling the truth about events that happened for real, like serial killers and whatnot. But it was kind of a escapism in a way. Now, same thing was in so many ways with black metal, fighting religion, fighting beliefs, fighting the kind of a Western civilization's worldview, you know, work, taxes, God, and blah, blah, blah. And now when you act politics into that, it seems to kind of the circle is complete. It has become like punk with certain different political agenda. And obviously that divides people into different categories. Some are so much against this that they are running away from black metal and th I think that's kind of a good thing also because nobody wants to see black metal becoming commercial thing in the first place. Now there are lots of people like me who can listen to music without being bothered by lyrics and they sometimes become targets as well because there seems to be this mantra like if you are not with us you're against us which then again tells more about this person's black and white worldview than anything else. Like, for example, if I'm, if I have friends who are on the right, I become the enemy of the left, even though I might have friends on the left as well. And I think it's kind of a ridiculous, to be honest. Now, um, in my opinion, NSBM is kind of genre that should not be, at least in black metal. I would be totally okay it was kind of a right-wing punk or something or maybe kind of a right-wing trash metal, but when it is kind of uh, put into black metal, which was all about being anti-society and anti-religious 
and all that stuff, it became kind of a parody of its own, you know? And now I know many people's gonna hate me because I'm not anti-NSPM and because I am uh, not also pro-NSPM, so I'm gonna probably get up in the crossfire. But to be honest, I'm totally fine with it. Because first and foremost, I'm in for the music. My personal ideologies, if any, or values, if any, have nothing to do with metal music as such. And even if they happen to do, well, I don't care for the left party, I don't care for the right party, and I most certainly don't care for the religious or black and white worldview. So uh, I hope this kind of clarifies what I'm after, and I also hope that this gives you a little bit indication of what NSPM was and what it is nowadays and how confusing it can be nowadays because it's really really it isn't the same in 2020 as it was in say 1999 things have changed so much and these boundaries are all very much blurred and it might work for some people, it might be okay for some people, because you really don't know, is this band okay, is this band okay, is this band okay? this is not okay. But it, I mean, I think it's kind of doing a disfavor to all of us. It's, it's not really helping anybody. I kind of hope that NSPM bands would be more transparent in what they do, so people who are allergic to that stuff could really easy to spot, okay, this is way too much for me, I'm not gonna take it. And instead of not being this kind of a compromised actor, like, we are somewhat on their right, but not too much, we're like, I mean, that's kind of a pussy-ass talk. Um, I don't know what to say really about it. I kind of hope NSPM would cease to exist, and then again, I also hope it would become more clear, because it's not gonna cease to exist anyway. I don't know, random rant for uh, your Sunday or Saturday watching. What are your thoughts about NSPM? Should it end, should it die, or should it keep grinding and conquering? What do you think? Put your comments on the box below and vote. But one thing, be civil about it. All those unnecessary like, bullcrap will be removed. Thank you for watching. And by the way, should you still be following Rauda after this video, we have Patreon account created, so feel free to support the channel for the interviews to come, and if you choose to, vanish after this video. It was nice having you on board. Bye-bye.